getting a police escort to our destination. We're in traffic, so you know we will. Hey, wait for it. Wait, oi. What are you, what are you doing, man? What are you doing, you? Officers. Yeah, en route. We're in Birmingham right now. We're going to come and see what we're here as an invite. Uh, a VIP invite from my friend at Flex Fitness. Big shout out to Fessel. What are you saying, big arms? Uh, he's the current record holder, by the way. Big shout out to you, bro, for the uh, 9 AR bench press challenge. Man, free to. I'm not going to say how many reps you got to see the vlog, but first, I'm coming for you. I did you in the press with last time. Don't worry about that. On this, well, today we're here. Sean Roden should be here, Mr. Olympia. The oldest Mr. Olympia of all time. And he just won it this year, just gone, so he's a current reign and Mr. Olympia champion. So I got an invite from Fessel to come out and vlog him. So we're going to go out to Flex Fitness. It's becoming my second home, really, isn't it? It's going to be my third vlog on that place. But yeah, join us and let's see what happens for the day today. So we're, we're in Birmingham right now. Uh, we're making good time, so stay with us. What's up here? Yeah. What's up, man? Hey, this is a person. This is a guy who smashed the Lion AR bench press challenge. When we put that out there, that was a warm up. That was no, a warm -up. No, 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 look at the size difference. That was a warm up. That was a warm up. No. I'm not going to tell you what you've done Don't after my number. But when we come together, we're going to do it back to back. Back to back. I'm going to see if 50 I can reps get... next time. Don't say how much you've done this time. Actually, 100. <laughs> All right, listen, go Actually, for three it. plates. We're going to do beep, beep, 30 reps. Beep. Hey, one of them. Fessel flexing it. What's happening, bro? Go inside. Keep it rolling, come on. You know you are, innit? So uh, the amazing thing is that you know Sean went from like this the second tier guy at the Flex Pro and the second tier guy at the Arnold Classic to like a few months later winning multiple shows in multiple countries and landing in third at the Mr. Olympia, which just people were stunned. Sideswiped everyone except me, Sean, and Chris. It was no surprise. And it was like, after the show, I, I went back to my room and he was like, what are you doing? You want to stop I said, no, I'm going back to my room. Yeah, you. The point being there is that, you know, just like 2012, we worked with Sean Glass and I was the training partner of Chris Cormier and Lex Wheeler and Paul DeLenn and a lot of uh, people that Aceto was actually prepping. And I, I would see the diets and I would see how he would transform their bodies and how things would just evolve and it kind of gave me a new, uh, a new thing from houses to cars and now it's now bodies. So um, when those guys retired, Rex retired and Chris retired and Paul moved retired, I kind of moved away and went to the private sector of training people and I was still doing my classic cars and my, and my uh, houses. So one day I'm in the gym and I was kind of disenchanted with bodybuilding. I don't like the way it was going. I didn't see the <laughs> but we're having a blast here. Um, I love coming to the UK. Um, you know, many thanks to my uh, friend Subi Ali, yeah. Mr. Concierge. <laughs> um, but we're having a blast here, and we just want to, you know, share a story as far as the road to the Olympia. Um, I think your fans have been great, um, pushing and motivating me for many years, and I really appreciate that. Ever since I became a high BB pro, I wanted to work with Chris Aceto. And, you know, I read his book, saw his work. Uh, 2009, I read my pro card. And, and I felt I would have the opportunity to work with Chris, and that didn't happen. I had run into Chris at the Flex Pro just in passing. I was working with Eduardo from Brazil. And I remember looking over and I was trying to figure out why is this guy so flipping hard. Um, even though I, I, I beat him at, that day, 
you know, still thought he, he should have beat me. He was just looking crazy stupid. And, you know, Craig had it. I went to FIBO and went into Charles' class. And, and then Charles said to me, my window of opportunity was, was this big. All right, we got one right here. What's your views on the Daddy oh, oh, asked a question, so. I want to know about gaming. I don't want to know about it. I don't think there's anything such as a cheat meal. Uh, especially this last prep, you know. So, I, my training partner is Stanimal. He's competing in his um, classic physique. And his body is a little bit different than mine, where he can consume large quantity of carbohydrate day in and day out and massive <laughs> massive quantity of carbohydrate and um i know you guys said don't use it but i just learned that yesterday i can't throw it out yet <laughs> how often do you try it um I train pretty much six days a week, and the close I guess the competition. Actually, I'm gonna have Psycho answer this. He's in charge of training. I just kind of. I realized a long time ago, as much as I thought I know, I know nothing. So I try to surround myself with the greatest minds that know exactly what needs to be done in far as preparation for a competition. So I could just focus on what. And now sound crazy. What's written on a piece of paper? What's been told? So I don't have to seven do. blood transfusions. We went 23 days straight doing doubles. And there wasn't training. It was an old-fashioned take somebody in the back in the alley and beat them down every day. It was a beat down. It was a beat down. It, it was just over and over and over again. Like I said, I would use Stan as a pump. Obviously you've prepped a lot of guys. And as you're talking about metabolisms, out of all the pro bodybuilders you've prepped, who have you had on the most food and the least food? John is the least food. Um, and Jay was the most food. When Jay won the Arnold the second time, uh, he will tell you that he used to have to lie to people because he wouldn't want to get into like, what are you eating? Because then it would, it, it would open up the like, Pandora's box for more questions. And it was just like this weird, he had a fast metabolism and he just ran with running into that show enormous amount of food and just never cut it. And you know, he'd say, you know, I, I, I gotta cut it at some point, right? To get harder. And I'd say, you look harder to me, don't cut it. And we just never. Question for the cycle. Where did you get your knowledge in terms of training? So like, as you said that you kind of, well, uh, I started a small gym in LA. Like this is like a not a suburb, but basically the inner city. I started. I started. So it was basically prison style training. That's that's basically what it was. I would work out with ex cons, and they only had an hour to work. Out. This is my brother Kaka. And people call Afghani people kaka when they're serving food. This guy's serving muscle. Kaka, what are you saying, man? Looking in good shape, man. Last time I seen him, he was a bit wider, but he was oh, smaller. What you no, 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 a bit smaller. What are you weighing now? 14 and a half. 14 and a half? Yeah, it was Same kind of weight. The main this man. is the competitor. They call him the lion. <laughs> yeah, they call him the caca man. What's happening? Are you competing now? Yeah, yeah. Look, they come first in all then. First put them in one and second one I come to the British finals. Let's go. In the top six. So now, that was the first time competing but after that. Yeah, that was the first time competing first year. So now coming in this year now, gonna go on to do comedy bigger 
What do you stay on stage? What do you walk on that stage? What weight? Probably walk on the stage about 12 stones, 8 pounds. Is it hard to get down for the weight? Well, I know my body good enough now, so really it doesn't take me that long. What are you at your heaviest? Every stop being is 14, 10, 14, 8. You know when I see the last time I thought he was like 16 stone. No, you just got a big shoulder in it, bro. Well, because I'm short, isn't it? Where do you see him on the stage? Forget Sean Rowan, then we're going to be having a cacker there. We've got to do it, man. Yeah. Who's this one? This is my brother, the CEO, Imran Hadji <laughs> This is Mr. Muscle. He's one of the bosses of this place. I introduced from the big guy last time, that's the partner, but this is the brother who's the man, who's a man behind the man. <laughs> so <laughs> now my is looking in good shape. And uh, ask you very quickly, what's it like being an owner of a gym? Especially someone like Flex Fitness, you know, like, it's a nice looking gym, what's it like? I'm never here. Really. I don't know how it feels, bro. No, but to be honest, when you first opened it to where it is now, I'm in love. Facebook is where it came from. You know, um, it's done well. His CV is too big. We're not going to go into it. He's international. But on that note, to say Freakum. Freakum. Right now, just with these three brothers from Burton on Tread, man. Say your names, man. Come on. What's your name? Ross. Ross. Hey, Ross. Ross. These brothers are from Burton, they're watching the world vlogs, they want to say Freaker. Say Freaker. Was it Freaker? Freaker. He's Freaker. a bad boy, bro. Tell me. Tell me. What's the vlog? I'll put it definitely in. Put my first bit. Put your face out. Come on. We have to big up my brother Shazzy PMG, man. Long time, my brother. Yes, my brother. Hey. Ali Rashid. Every time AKA we're in the house. Freaker. We're the always house. freaking him. Listen, last time we had a pretzel competition, I think he just beat him by one, only because he took it easy. We need to see the biceps, bro. Oh, the biceps are gone. No, no, the biceps are gone, man. He will do for the bullet. Come on, Oh, the wife ain't gonna like this, you know, bro. Sister, sorry, he's asked to show us. Come on. Mashallah. Only for you, bro. Only for us. We're gonna say that. He won't do that for anyone Only for you. He's just for Ali Rashid. How big are they? About 23 inch? I don't know. Yo, well, 17 inch. Let's take a picture. Let's take a picture. Let's take a click on the picture thing, innit? You could do that. Yeah? One that is. Listen, my brother's done. PMG crew in the house. Shazzy. Anyone you want to give a shout out to? Uncle Nos. Yeah, shout out to Uncle Nos. All the PMG boys and all the Flex League boys. You want some, you come and get some. <laughs> house of Listen. Pain. Big up to my brother, original, from day one, you know, day one. We're gonna have to have a training session. Whenever, my brother, whenever. I'm gonna organize it, me, you, Fess. We're gonna do one of them super set kind of sessions. Yeah, bro. We're gonna have to go free. Yeah, the next level now. Yo, we're on some pre-workout. You know, just scoop my pre-workout in the mouth and just drip thing, like, just rolling heavy. Brother, big up, always love. Respect, my brother, respect. Always, always. Nice Boy, line out today. We've got Sean Roden uh, down to the UK. It's a pleasure to see you, Sean. Thank you. Looking in great shape. Thank you, sir. Big accomplishment. Coming back from the illness that you had, all the drawbacks, all the setbacks, just to come back and win it and win to big boys. You're looking in good shape. What is it like, life after Mr. Olympia? Like winning Mr. Olympia, you've hit the pedestal, you've hit the top bar. Has life changed for you now? Uh, to be honest, no. I pretty much I went home and. Um, you know, I tell this story and people laugh because I have a three-year-old daughter, so driving back from the Olympia, I went home and it was like, hon, can you take the trash out? Wow. <laughs> I just went back to um, just life, regular life, you know, not as Mr. Olympia, but... What about on a professional level, endorsements, sponsorships? Do you think it's opened a whole different domain for you? Yes, most definitely. I've, um, been approached uh, a hundred times more wow. uh, as far as direction that I need to go in as far as endorsement and nine years of sacrifice and you got to the top I mean when you entered you came in at number 11 for your first Olympia then the second one you jumped up to was it number three yes. then you went back to number five or number four so it was a bit of a just a yoga just at the top in the top mix but going from the illness that you had and and Tell us a, just a tiny little bit of what it's like to fight through it. Did you know you were going to come back on that stage or do you think you was finished as a bodybuilder when you were lying in that hospital for months? You know, what happened is after um, 
I broke and jaw and wired, you know, jaw wired shut for 12 weeks and coming back to compete in the 2017 Mr. Olympia and uh, taking fifth. And then to go through the bleeding ulcer and all that, you know, the start of uh, 2018, I wanted to still compete in the Arnold Classic, you know, six weeks later, but, you know, Jim Mannion kind of shut that idea down. Um, I actually got out of the hospital and actually went back to the gym, um, pretty much right out of the hospital, you know, saying, hey, I'm still gonna prep. And he showed up in LA and he was like, it's not gonna happen. Um, but mentally, you know, I, I knew walking away from this sport was gonna be my choice, and that was gonna be my choice, no matter what was going on. And I was gonna be forced out, and I knew that I still had a lot left in the tank as far as competition-wise. One quick question, beating Phil Heath, who was gonna go for that almost against the records, you stopped that from happening. I mean, I don't know what your relations like behind the scene, but how did that feel as a competitor to knock him off the pedestal where Jay Cutler tried and failed? I mean, Big Rami came a second to him almost, so what was it like for you to just come in, off the illness, knock him off the top spot? Come on, psychologically, that's going to be a... Yeah, that, I, I think 2017 with a broken jaw going to the Olympia, for me, I realised that... How did you break your jaw? Uh, fell in the tub and broke my jaw in oh, two right, places. Okay. I was about to say. You know, after that, I just felt as if it didn't matter what was tossed at me. You know, so to recover from that, I felt strong and secure enough that I was like, you know what, it doesn't matter what happened for me or not, I'm going to be prepared. You know, so after the seven blood transfusion and. Seven? Yeah. And um, getting back on stage for the Olympia, I was uh, more focused than ever. And to actually walk away winning after all that. You're yeah, 28, 2019 this is going to be a great year. You're around for a little while now. Yeah. You're not going anywhere, are you? I mean, it's good to see Sean Roden today. It's Freakum TV. Can you say Freakum, baby? Freakum, baby. Hey, the ball with the plane, my man. Just coming out of Flex Fitness uh, with my brother, C. Sudi, and uh, the team that him run, Kaka, brothers, Shazzy PMG. Thanks for the hospitality. Um, Sean Roden, I wasn't very impressed with Sean Roden to be honest, as a personality, I respect his achievement at the age of 43, I respect the fact of what he's achieved and how he's done it, coming back from, you know, debilitating pain and almost like life-threatening surgeries and blood transfusions, but to see him actually talk, he's a bit dry, he's a bit dry and he's, he don't come across very fluid. So maybe he might have been dehydrated, I'll make an excuse for him. So on that note, there's another exclusive for you, courtesy of Flat Fitness. Do your thing, boys, Birmingham, soon. Coming international, free cup. Thanking you for watching, and do leave a comment, and do subscribe if you haven't already. I'm watching you, free cup.